Okay, here we go. So um, I've got James Kingston here with me, and I'm Mark Hookway, and uh, we're both from Tunbridge Athletic Club. He's the fast runner, and I'm the <laughs> coach and <laughs> team manager. And um, it's December the 12th on a cold, snowy night and yeah, middle of cold. training. Yeah. Um, but what we thought we would do, because we did a, a few what mentoring videos uh, a while back during lockdown and just after, the, in the hope that some of our younger athletes and also parents, maybe other coaches, maybe other athletes, um, can just gleam a few interesting bits of information that they might you know might learn from so james has been running really well this winter and um he's just progressed from uh, under 20 age group last year to his first year as a senior you're 21 in january aren't you yeah yeah 21 that's january yeah so just to give a rough idea he's got pbs of 800 158 not so proud of that one, are you? <laughs> uh, well, I, did, I did run a 157 in a school match, so oh, I okay. count it as 157. All right. Um, much more impressive 1500 meters, 351.98 this summer. Um, 3000 meters of 830.4, but um, that wasn't really a time trial one, that was more just a league race, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know actually which race that was. Is that the National League final? Yeah. Yeah. Oh right, yeah, that was yeah, that wasn't much of a race. Oh, no, so it's potential there, and I would imagine your five thousand meter time from two thousand twenty one fifteen eighteen on the track mm -hmm. could probably be improved at some point. So, definitely, definitely, that wasn't a great race. No, uh, which was that then? I think that was the Kent champs, the five k champs, but that was I was just like running to the ground at that point. So didn't have a great race that day, but then was only a couple of seconds off in a national league a few weeks later, and I felt much better. So okay, yeah, but not a lot of experience with five thousand meters on the track. But you ran five k down in Cardiff. That was in August, wasn't it? It was the podium five k. You yeah. ran fourteen sixteen there. Um, and then other than that, lots of really good. Um, road relay results and other results um should say the tunbridge part run record holder no yeah uh, proudest mm. achievement obviously one of the dogs wants to go out james or he's <laughs> just giving you a cheer sorry about that <laughs> sorry about that viewers <laughs> two golden retrievers we both love dogs anyway yeah sorry yeah part run yeah that was that was good that was a lot tougher than i thought it was going to be actually at the time but yeah i'm glad i got it especially as my whole family does park run so it's a nice thing to have there so Pretty yeah good. there's a bit of background there the whole family runs to some degree don't they yeah yeah so it started out with my older brother and then um i started and lucy my twins started and then my mum and dad got more into it with park run about probably like five, ten years ago. And then my older sister started a bit more recently doing park running. And we all run fairly regularly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, just quickly finish off. Uh, you were second fastest in the order shot row relay. So Jack Rowe, fifth fastest at the Mansfield cross country uh, relays, the national. Sixth fastest at Sutton Coalfield in the national road relay. And seventh fastest long leg in the national 12 stage back in the spring. So cranked out some really fast road running there, but won't be recognized necessarily by the wider part run fraternity. And <laughs> no, just, just us specialists that we yeah, recognize. Yeah. 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 A lot. It's, it's less to like fewer people sort of understand it because only if, only if you've actually been to the relays, you really know what sort of yeah, like how good they are. So. For most people, it sort of means nothing, really, unless you tell them the names you, you're with. But, yeah, they're pretty good. And then your last race was the trials for the European Cross Country, where you finished 15th in the senior race. Um, you were seventh of the under-23s. Probably missed a Great Britain place by about 10 seconds or so, didn't you? Something like that. I think I lost a bit of time near the end. So I think it was more like 20. But 
um yeah it was i was there or thereabouts about a mile to go so yeah not far off yeah but um you've successfully made the uh, first step from junior to senior and, th and this is what we wanted to talk about really so um what would you say in terms of you you know let's go let's go back to your school days and your school background can you remember how you viewed the sport then and your experiences then what were what were they like so like when i first started running it was back in primary school when my brother sort of did it and because we lived a bit further away i sort of did it as well but i i always enjoyed it back in the day and then just running around the school fields in pe just when they said i'll just go and run for half an hour i always enjoyed that but then obviously I went to Judd and the the culture for running and like cross country is really good there and I was just I went to the first junior running club on a Wednesday as a year seven and there was like so many people out there running a few other good year sevens and I just sort of and it just made me love it so much more and it was really good and from there obviously with the club as well as the school I just had such a good a few good groups of friends there and it just helped me keep at it but I always I always really enjoyed it from when I first did it just the running and sort of just pushing myself and going as quick as I can for as long as I can, could. So is the competitive side rather than just the actual motion of going for a run or was it the what was it particularly? It was it was both I, I like I just liked running, to be honest. It was both I liked running and plus I liked the feeling afterwards when you've you've worked hard and you've, you know, achieved something. It's a lot, just basically most parts of it really. Sometimes it's a bit of a slog, but um yeah, most of the time going out for a run, I just thoroughly enjoy it. And in those in those school days, did you were you what sort of character were you? Were you somebody who worried about your performances, compared yourself to others? I mean, how can can you honestly think back now how you how you viewed the competitive side of the sport? I think I think back when I started, so like especially the young years at school, it was sort of just just rocking up and running. I didn't really know what was going on, what everything meant. I remember turning up to my first national cross at Parliament Hill just sort of not really understanding what was going on. Not really, it didn't really click that this was actually like the national with all the best runners in the country. I sort of just like, oh, it's another race, you know? And then as I got a bit older and started doing a bit better, I was like, okay, maybe start to think about it more like, oh, where should I be? What should I be doing? And everything like that. But especially in the early days, it was just sort of, you know, rock up and race and then, you know, run with your mates at school and tack. And it was, it was fairly simple. Not, I've got a note here though, James. You 2015 under 13 national 19th. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like <laughs> even after that, I was like, I didn't. It didn't really click that I was 19th in the national. It was just like, oh yeah, I was 19th in a quite high quality race, but it didn't really like. I couldn't didn't really process it. You know what? I was that high up in my first national cross. Like it was just sort of just mm -hmm. another race, so to speak. But thinking about it now, it was actually very very good. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then, um, but then, but then, I think the following following year you were eighty seventh, and then fifty first as a top under fifteen in the national. Was that indicative of where you are? Did you? Do you um, think? the eighty seventh probably was. I think under fifteen is a tough age group because there's a lot of people who are a lot bigger, and I wasn't. I was probably a bit of a later developer than some other people, so I was still quite small as a year nine in bottom under fifteen. Um, and then top on 15, I, you know, I wanted to come higher up. I, um, I'd been ill before the national. I think I was sixth at Southerns that year and, um, wanted to come higher up at national, but I, I'd got ill before and I think I had laryngitis at the time. And so it didn't quite go to plan. I think it took a bit more out of me than I thought it would, but like, it wasn't, it wasn't a disaster. We still won a national a team medal so it was it's all right but it wasn't quite where i wanted to be yeah yeah and then you seem to from under 17 onwards you know just going on the national results 17th 10th 20th and 15th so you've got amongst the top sort of 20 in the country especially across country um was that what do you what do you put that that change down down to i'm not really sure to be honest it was I'm possibly just doing 
more runs. I was probably at the time doing uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then probably only like four runs a week at the time. But it was probably just throughout their age groups. Just I feel like as an, a top under 15, I, I could have been there, but then maybe took a step up. But I don't, I don't think I changed that much at that point. Maybe it was just the increasing in mileage over the time doing a few more runs, but I don't think it was that much difference. I just, over time, happened just to stick healthy, at it. A golden retriever, or one of them, is barking to come back in, so I've just got to <laughs> pause it. Okay, slight interruption. Yeah, sorry about that, James. Yeah, so... <laughs> Right, two golden retrievers outside. No doubt they'll want to come in in a minute, but um, yeah, they're playing in the snow. So uh, yeah, yeah. So during during your you know teenage years um, with the running or sport in general or home life, what how do you think your parents were um, with you? Because yeah, you know, some some parents are very involved, aren't they? Some just pay no attention at all. Some are encouraging. Some are demanding. Some um, yeah, you know, I'm. You know, aren't really interested. What I mean, what? How would how would you describe the family in terms of you're running through your school school years? Um, I think they were very supportive. Like whatever, like however I was doing, they're always really supportive. Like took me to races, came and watched most races. So, uh, but thing is, they they were like new to it, sort of, so to speak, as much as I was in the early days, and so. But as I as I ran more, I sort of knew more about the running than they did. So they, I don't want to say they weren't in a position to uh, advise me on like training and all that, but they could like give me advice if they wanted. But it turned I knew more about what I was doing than they did. So it was just support, really. It was they didn't have much involvement in my actual training or whatever like that. But obviously taking me to races, and I'll always be grateful for that. Mm. And look, and looking back, I mean, who who. When you were at school, were your your big competitors, you know, around Kent and nationally, or did you take any? Did you look up to people particularly? Or, or? Uh, so my main competitors back in the day you had people like uh, like Rowan Fuss, who was very good when I first started as an under thirteen. He was a year younger, who was extremely good, but he um, he stopped not long after. And then you had people like Archie May from Dartford, who was good in those middle years, and then obviously in the sort of later school years, you had the likes of all the Invicta guys, so Charlie Brisley, Cameron Cray, and then obviously most notably Matt uh, Estonia, yeah. who obviously has gone on to quite big things at the moment. But yeah, yeah. yeah they, they were always they were always there. It was I never really had a time where I was at the front in Kent. I had I think I had one Kent champs one year. And then that was the year that Matt got his first England vest. So afterwards like he was always in front and you had cam and charlie always there so i never had a time even in kent where i was right at the front i was obviously near them but not winning every rate or like kent leagues and stuff so it was good because even like the local league matches i had a good race if they if they were there and like kent champs and stuff so never had a trot round like footscray for an easy win at kent league it was always a tough race yeah <laughs> Yeah, if only you could get your PB for fifteen hundred to three thirty-two, that'd be. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that's happening anytime soon. <laughs> so, um, have you, have you ever done any other sports then since you started running? Particularly, have you mixed it with anything else? Yeah, so I played football as I think the vast majority of young guys do. Um, I stopped mainly because of running. I I got to a point where the football was having a negative effect on my running so I think maybe at the age of like 14 13 14 I stopped because I, I got injured at the start of the season in, in the football and then I just thought you know what I'm not enjoying this as much as I am the running so I had to make a decision and then obviously with school played a bit of rugby but that was sort of because I had to I played a bit in the like C's C team so it was never amazing but you know had to do a bit for a couple of years wasn't too disappointed when I was allowed to stop that though. Another intermission while we let the dogs back in. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so you managed somehow to duck rugby at Judd. That takes some doing, I guess, because I haven't been there years ago. I know it's the, very much a traditional rugby school. Yeah, I did. I did a little bit in year seven and eight, but um, once uh, so once I started I run a bit like running well, Mister Fraser sooner uh, made me stop. Okay, and he was quite happy to support that. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we 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 had a good team at, at a school in. So um, he wanted us to be fit and healthy for the for like the schools cup in like year eight and then year ten. So yeah, we should, you you should say it's quite a uh, a supportive school in terms of cross country and athletics. It's one of the strongest in the country. It goes in for all the major competitions, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's great, and it like every year they have so many good runners. But it's like it's it's all down to the people that are there, like Mr. Fraser and Mr. Taylor. Braz and JT, as I like to call them, uh, they uh, they're very good at getting people, like getting any everyone as many people as possible out running, and then from there they can de like develop all athletes of all abilities, and some of them carry on and start doing well. Like Dubs, for example, he will be the first to admit that when he started he was absolutely terrible, uh, but now he's running very well, running at very big mileage. So yeah, uh, it's very good, and there's and. There's a lot of success as well, which is always good fun. And like we go, we go to uh, Lanzarote and we went to Wells School. So there's a lots of opportunities there as well. So, but yeah, that was very good environment for cross country running. Yeah, great memories. Yeah, definitely. And, then, and they've come away from the English School's cross country cup this year with a, a team win, didn't they? So it's still yeah, continuing. yeah, yeah. Can you can you remember through your teenage years having any particular injuries or, or illnesses or anything that was setbacks you had to deal with that challenged you particularly? Um, I think I've been fairly lucky with injuries and illness. Like I have, I've obviously had illnesses. Like I said, for that nationals, I was ill, um, but that wasn't too bad. I was probably a few weeks out. Um, injuries. The most I've had is probably like three, three weeks. I had, plantar fasciitis after English schools in year 12 I think I ran English schools in pain because I won because I really wanted to race but had a few weeks off for that I had the injury that made me stop football which was a few weeks and a few like niggles here and there but I've generally been okay with injuries uh, I've always been good at stretching which possibly has helped um, I'm not really sure but sometimes it's luck maybe a, like I know a few people who turn their ankle on anything but you know possibly lucky maybe maybe it's because i've been doing the right things but i've generally been lucky with injury and then illness as well yeah and that and that that has continued really but you have been quite robust i mean can you talk us through some of the things you do and don't do um to maintain that side of things yeah so i at stretch after every run with and um and before i go to bed every night uh i think that's helped a lot and over over lockdown i got a bit of a niggle um and was like you know what i think i should be stretching a bit more um i do a bit of strengthening as well like most nights i do a bit of like core and upper body just something small because i don't like to do a big session of it so i just do a small bit every night and then i do uh some more like circuits dedicated to like the legs and stuff uh a bit bigger once a week um which i think has helped but i also think um eating well and sleeping well has helped so i try and get around at least like eight hours sleep a night obviously it varies and sometimes i get more but generally but that's about a benchmark for me uh eating i tend to get you know a good amount good amount of food lots of carbs like all the all the main groups really been pretty lucky my mum's made good meals throughout when I was younger so just carried on from there um and yeah I, I've got a massage gun as well which has helped uh bought that like a year ago now so that's that's quite useful but yeah that's pretty much it I don't go out and do anything crazy too much I don't drink so I don't have the risk of going out and doing something stupid so I think that all probably helps towards that yeah You've got quite an interesting regime now at home, haven't you, in terms of the cooking? Yeah, so we have like a rotor, basically. So I tend to cook like twice a week. My mum will cook, cook twice a week. My sister will cook a couple of times a week and my dad usually once a week. So it's 
is pretty good. It means I don't have to cook on like tap club nights when I'm, you know, out for most of the evening. But on other nights when I'm a bit more free and other people have got stuff on that I'll be cooking, and so it works out pretty well. Plus, it means I know I'll have at least two nights of pasta because if I'm cooking it, so. <laughs> and uh, go go on on back to sleep. Um, any disciplines around that in terms of you know reading social media phone or anything else that you feel you're quite good at um i try and like have a a bit of time before i go to bed which is just like fairly relaxed so even if i've been out i'd, I'd rather have half an hour sort of either like something like sitting in front of the tv or doing something just completely relaxed then go to bed straight away unless it's obviously really late just i feel like that helps and i have um there's like a blue blue light filter on my phone which i have on all the time so it's supposed to help sleep but yeah that's i don't really have i don't tend to read but well i don't read before bed um but yeah that's not necessarily i just like to get a bit bit relaxed before i go into bed generally are you quite a generally relaxed person or do you uh, do you worry about things or can you sleep you know switch it off and sleep well um, no, I'm, I'm generally fairly relaxed. I'm, I'd say I'm fairly laid back, to be honest. Um, some things can get me a bit stressed, but uh, I think in general, I'm pretty good at that. I can get to sleep whenever. But the, the main thing is I think sometimes people get too stressed about not getting enough sleep. Whereas like, I know that, you know, if one night I don't have very good sleep and get like less than six hours, for example, for any reason, like I know, I can catch up another night. It won't affect me too much as long as I've had decent sleep leading up to it. For example, like my, when I was 10th at the National Cross as an under-17, um, which is probably one of my best races at the time, um, I got very, very poor sleep the night before. I think I got like three hours or something. But it's just, I didn't. I was like, you know what? What can you do? You know, I've got good sleep before, so and I've ran well. So I just try and not let, if I do not, if I don't get very good sleep, Try not let, let it affect me too much. Yeah, yeah. And also, I I feel you know seeing you regularly operate in training, how you how you approach things. Um, what stands out to me is how you've been able to build that consistency across many months. Uh, not an insignificant overall volume, but you you instinctively know, or you've learned how to decide when to push in training and when not to push in training i think is that that's fair to say i think isn't it you you're quite you're quite good at recovery runs and things like that you're not getting sucked into you know racing in training and sessions etc yeah it's, i i think so it's you know i i think the good thing about the group at the moment is that you know we all get on well and we also sort of know each other's strengths and weaknesses and where we're at at the moment. So there's a lot of communication. So we don't really have anything to prove. I think sometimes you, in some groups you rock up to a session and you're like, oh, I, I need to beat these guys, prove that where I'm at. But there's not, not like that in our group, really. So it's quite good. Sometimes you just, I just, you know, I try and target specific sessions. Like we had the 400s on Friday and I love that session. So I was like, yeah, I want to I wanna do this one well. But most of the time, you know, it's just about getting the volume in at a good pace, like pushing it that extra couple of percent is not going to make too much difference, but it might tire you out for the rest of the week and then it will affect your whole training. So plus, if I was pushing 100 percent each each session, it would it would be a lot more running by myself. So I think it's always good to run with the group, especially if they're going at a good pace. You know, it's much more fun in a session. So I think. Not it's not always conscious choosing. It's just sometimes as well. You just go in, you're feeling all right. So you might say, "Oh, I might gonna push this session a bit harder," or sometimes you're not feeling great, so you might oh, just sit in a bit. So it's not always conscious, but you know, it's I try not to absolutely smash every session because I don't think it would do much good for me. Yeah, yeah. And you've gradually built up over the years, haven't you? You, you, you know, inch the overall volume and number of days up i mean t nowadays you know what, what's a you know typical week uh, in terms of overall volume and number of runs and things like that 
do you want to run through it sort of yeah so yeah so a typical week uh when i'm not racing obviously is monday i'll do probably five miles in the morning and eight miles in the no seven miles sorry in the afternoon and then tuesday will be a session so that might be on the in the winter that'll be a longer session on the road in the summer it might be slightly shorter stuff on the on the fields uh wednesday would be four and a half miles in the morning and then seven and a half in the afternoon with uh harrison fraser he he would love that i've uh, said his name there um and then thursday is generally a 10 mile run uh friday is generally a session on the track so obviously in the summer that'll be a bit shorter and and in the winter a bit longer but and then depending on what i'm doing at the weekend i'll do one of the days is 10 miles and one of them is 16 long 16 mile long run it depends if i'm working on either day or what i've got going on but yeah, it's a bit flexible that, but generally it'll be a sixteen mile long run and ten mile on the other day. And you you've developed um, a lifestyle currently that really is supportive of that, haven't you? Because you know, just talk us through. Yeah, you know, after leaving school, um, you tried university, didn't you? And uh, yeah, you perhaps you ought to. Yeah, it's, wondering how you, yeah. how you get the training in now and what your what your life's like. Yeah, so I went to so obviously. We had COVID, so we we left school uh, sort of earlier. Left school sort of early. Didn't have the exams, so I was able to build up mileage there. But then went off to Nottingham Uni and was there for a couple of months. Just didn't really agree with the uni life and didn't like the um didn't like the course, so I left. And then since then, I've got I work uh twenty five hours a week at um a GP practice where my mum works, and then once or twice sometimes three times a week at um, the running hub in Southborough but um and then whilst also doing uh the open an open uni course which I probably don't do as much much work for as I should but you know I do enough to do well so it works out all right and then so it's quite good if I've managed to fit the running around there quite well my hours are pretty flexible at Borough Green I can I can get the five hours in a day sort of whenever I want so some days are going early, early with, and with my mum. Sometimes I go in a bit later and get manage to get a run beforehand. So pretty good, flexible, but it works out pretty well. I've got a good balance at the moment of getting everything like earning, earning money at work, but also getting a good amount of running and also rest and recovery and everything for. So it's, it at the moment I've got good balance. And again. Um supportive parents with, with all with all of that you've got two more years of your open university course if you want to complete it haven't you yeah yeah i do um yeah a couple more years after this this academic year so so got a while to go yeah yeah good and so you know looking forward i mean oh one, one thing i should i'm always intrigued about um mental stresses and things like that and um you are on strava aren't you Yes. And you're on the other bits of social media, but you don't always wear your watch, uh, you know, particularly for races, do you? you know, just talk through that. Yeah, so I I wore a watch back in the day. I don't know how old I was. I wore a watch regularly, but I used to, I used to just used to find myself looking at it way too much and just get bogged down on looking at the watch and run. So I, I, I don't know when I decided, but it was a while ago now I decided not to wear a watch. And I only really started wearing a watch probably a year or two ago now, um, just because I went, it was easier to track distance and what I was doing, my mileage and everything. Um, I do wear my watch on every run, um, apart from races. My watch at the moment is pretty bad, so it doesn't upload all of them. <laughs> so if you look <laughs> at my Strava, it's a bit up and down. But... Um, I'm I'm hopefully getting a new one for Christmas, but um, yeah, I, I never wear it for races. I just they just I just don't feel the need because every race is different. It's not about the pace. You're racing a race. You're not racing generally for a time unless it's well, on the track or road, but especially cross country. Mm. I just don't see the point because some courses you can be running very slow because it's muddy and hilly, but you're doing really well. So I just I just I don't like it. And you, I, what annoys me the most is like watching videos or seeing people in races and then looking at their watch every few hundred meters. I'm like, what are you doing? Just, just a race. Don't look at your watch. It doesn't matter about the pace. Mm. 
you know. He agrees. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that, that's interesting. And, and talk, talk to me about um, your mindset during races. I mean, you, you're getting a lot out of yourself because suddenly, I mean, you've, you've even finished races and you've been surprised how you're able now to compete in, alongside people you really looked up to a year or so ago. Uh, yeah, it must be that your mental capacity in that respects, you know, developed as well as your your physical capacity. I'm not I'm not really sure it is to be honest. I sort of just go into a race and you know get myself out fairly well. I've never been a great starter, so get myself out and try to run my own race. Sometimes that doesn't work, and generally when I don't, I won't run as well. But I I try and do my own thing and then see how that goes. If I feel good, I'll move through. I have finished some races this season. I've been like, it's crazy where I'm at right now. Like, but um, generally it's just, I try and not think about the people that I'm with. I just try and think about myself and running and running my own race. Uh, obviously it's hard. It's easier said than done when you're running with the, some of the people that I've been running with at the moment. But uh, yeah, I, I just try and focus on myself and, make a judgment really I, I remember one rate in Milton Keynes this year I had to I was at the end of a short lap and I had to make a decision about whether to go with uh with a group of people who like had previously beaten me in Cardiff or sit in this other group and I decided to you know what go for it and it turned out pretty well so I just try and run my own race see how I feel and not get bogged down by other people but um yeah it sometimes it's hard to do that also stri strikes me, you, you keep things in perspective. You don't get too overexcited when you've had a great race or you don't get too down if something's not quite gone to plan. You, you're pretty level-headed. Is that fair? Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's, I just, I'm, I don't, I tend to be not a massively emotional person. So if I have a great race, it's like, you know what, it's a great, it's a good race, but will I be able to do it next time? You know, I want to try and, it's all about the next step, really. So if I have a bad race, it's like, you know what? I want to do better next time. If I have a good race, it's like, I want to replicate that and maybe even do, do even better next, than the next race. So it's, it's all just sort of thinking forward and what, what can be done better, even if I have a good race. Mm. And what are you particularly looking forward to in, in the future now, then? Well, Short -term the end of cross so we've got the end of cross country, the second half of the cross country season, so... I'm probably going to Perth do the cross challenge, which should be quite fun. Um, and then, then obviously national cross, which is always the big one for the club, and then into counties as well. But there's not too much, and then, and then the road relays, um, which also again, a good fun. Um, and then on the track, we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, I'd like to get some good times, but I tend to start every track season saying, you know what, I fancy a bit of track. And then a few races in, I like, you know what? I really don't fancy much track. So we'll see how it goes. But I would like to get some decent times on the track. And then long term, you know, obviously I, I, I'd love to get a, like a selection vest, like Euro, Euro Cross or even like a GB vest. You know, this being so close this year in the next couple of years as an M23, it's definitely an aim to try and do that. But we'll see, have to see how I'm going at the time. Uh, but yeah, that the aim is just just carry on training and see see where it takes me. I'm not, you know, if it, if it if I carry on improving, then great. If I don't, then I'm I'm still happy running where I am at the moment. So, you know, it's just about trying to keep it going and seeing where where that takes me. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask what the, your attitude to track is these days, but uh, you've probably answered that. I think. Yeah. We will be not you in that direction. Yeah, I've never, I've never been much of a fan of track, to be honest. Though it's just, cross country is just so good, and then it gets to the track and it's, it's just not. I just don't find it as fun. I, I've had a few years in the in the recent past where, where I just just said at the start of the season, no, I don't really fancy any track. Been sort of dragged into a few league matches and stuff, but not really done any proper races. Um, but we'll see how the season goes. I, I probably should hit some, get some decent track times. You didn't go to an English school for the track, did you? No, no, I um, I did get national standard one year oh. as a as a top intermediate, but I didn't get selected, which was um, uh, I was not particularly happy about because I felt, felt like I should have been selected. 
but um you know i was ranked 10th in the uk that year so what that's what do? it is that's what it is that's bugging you that's what's stopping yeah. you yeah it's giving you this blockage about track <laughs> yeah. yeah maybe maybe um in terms of the, the, your training partners who are the best or the not necessarily the best but who do you enjoy training with the most and why hmm, that's an interesting question i don't want to I don't want to... Uh, I'm not going to ask the opposite. Them. I'm not going to ask the opposite. <laughs> <Who's that? laughs> um, I remember back when I was younger, I used to... I liked training with... Um, well, when he actually trained properly, Dan Schofield was a good person to train with because we ran together quite a lot. He d didn't always train massively seriously, but he was always good. We were always around each other back in the day. Uh, also had Fraser Gordon, who was annoying to train with, but also quite good. Because he, Whereas I used to try and attack it from the start, it, he would always come through near the end. So when he was coming through, it would be quite useful trying to hang on to him. Nowadays, you know, you've got uh, like Steve and Jamie, especially Jamie last year, we had a lot of good sessions together. Jamie Gooch. Was, Jamie Gooch, yeah. So that was quite useful because we were sort of similar speed that last year. So that was always really good. We had quite a lot of sessions together. Uh, Steve is always an interesting person because you don't know what Steve's, which Steve's going to turn up. Steve's trying uh, to. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's hit a bit hit or miss with Steve. It depends. He's sometimes had a long day at work and his struggles, but sometimes he absolutely flies around. So he's a good person to have. Plus, he's he's just a great person to have around the club, I think. Yeah. I would say on the, on, on the track, especially in the winter, it's good to have um, Ben Murphy. He's a good person to train with because obviously in the summer he's flying through rapid times on the track but in the winter it's a good person like when i'm doing the 400 reps uh he's really good plus um i like training with Corey because he keeps it very honest he there's no nonsense with Corey, so yeah. it's really good if like if you're not feeling so great but you think oh i might just sit back you know if Corey's there you know you might know what now i'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to work a bit today yeah so the, we've got a good group at the moment i think yeah, and, and how about when you get the 334, 1500 meter runner James West joins you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, uh, that was the fir first time he came down. I remember a few years ago when he first came down and just sort of being like, this guy is crazy fast and just sit, trying to hang on to the back. But more recently, obviously, it's been going better and it's, it's been really good because we had a few like of the alternate pace reps at the start of the winter when he came down for, which... I think I ran a 10k road PB there, um, and they were they were very very good sessions. Like I felt like we were going very quick, and um, so they were very good. Plus, you know, on the track as well, it's 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 interesting training with him because he's trained with so many top runners like Mo Farah and that, and so it's good and he brings a lot of experience. Plus, he always looks so comfortable. I remember first time I ran with him on the track, running behind him, and. He would change speed, but most people you can sort of tell. I was like, he's just gone. What's mm. happened? No change in style. He just went. So it's quite interesting training with him. But it's, it's it's been a good challenge in the recent weeks, just trying to trying to run with him because at the moment we're similar similar sort of pace. I think at the um, especially in the sort of sessions we've been doing recently. So it's been it's been good fun. Yeah, good. And um, I think you know. I've We've done most of it. I mean, I think, well, I, I suppose most topical. It's snow, it's snow and icy at the moment and freezing cold middle of the winter. I know you're off to Lanzarote with a little group <laughs> <laughs> on Wednesday. But ig ignoring that, um, that's with the old school group, isn't it? But um, yeah, ig ig ignoring that, I mean, how? what's your approach to this? This these conditions? Um, I try and stay on the grass. I don't I don't want to risk running on the roads um so sunday i probably could have got away with running on the roads it wasn't too bad in the end but i went 10 miles just around tumbridge school fields um which wasn't the most exciting but needs must you know i didn't want to slip yeah. um today again it was i didn't want to drive to work today so i had to go i went with my mum and then ran back from there but i planned a route which apart from the last couple of miles in tumbridge was 95 percent off-road so it was pretty good i just like to just stay off road off the slippy bits basically and just try and be careful it's yeah. it's just about being sensible really but 
yeah, generally, if it's snowing this time, like this time of year, I'll try and go down to like either Tumbridge School Fields or Fizzars down at the Judd Fields. So just get easy fields where you know where you're putting your feet. You're not going to slip and just run around there. I know it's not always the most exciting, but I don't want to slip over and hurt myself. So, yeah, yeah. And um, almost finally, James, I mean, bearing in mind this was pitched at really the the younger athletes and what they might learn as they try and transition to you know, senior athletics. I mean, what what are the gems of advice you, you might have for them? I think the most important thing, I think, is just to enjoy your running. You know, you might not, you don't know how long you'll be running for, you know, it might you might be running for a very long time, but you might not be. So just try and enjoy it. Um, I had a situation after nationals last year where I was very disappointed with how I ran and I sort of assessed everything and thought, you know what, what am I doing right now? I, I just want to enjoy my running first. I think, I think that's the most important thing. And if you do that, you know, you're going to get yourself out. Uh, the consistency will come. And then from there, who knows what can happen? Like you might have people ahead of you throughout the age groups, but if you stay consistent, increase your mileage slowly and just keep on keep on at it. You know, you're going to improve and you're going to see some results. So just try and enjoy what you're doing. And then from there, the consistency and the improvements will come. Yeah. And finally, anything you'd like to point out or mention you know, to wrap things up with? Because I've, I've probably forgotten to ask something, so yeah. I don't remember what was what was on that. What was on the sheet? Yeah, have you got it there? No, yeah, I've got them, but there's nothing, nothing written down. Yeah. This is open. This is this is nothing you prepared for. This is just anything yeah. you feel that I that I've missed. You know, put me on the spot there. Cool. Mm. I just think you know especially down at the club, it's really, I think it's really important to get a group out. I was really over, over COVID. I was really keen on just getting out with the different people. Firstly for myself, because running with other people is so much better, but also for other people, you know, getting them out. So I think one of the most important things I found throughout my running career is the group of people I've had in the sport with me. So whether that be my schoolmates, you know, like, I had a good group like Joe and Toby and Adam and um, Alex and Alex. So they, they were all there and throughout the age groups. And then with Tack as well, you had Fraser and then Alex Beeston in later years. We had a really good group. And then also, again, in Tack now, you've got all the people that I mentioned in training plus more. You know, I think one of the most important things is, you know, the people around you. And so it's really important just to, you know, it's great for make friends with like-minded people. I think that's one of the most important things. I think that often doesn't get mentioned in the sport is, you know, you see like all these athletes doing so well, but it's not only the athlete and like their coaches and like people who help them along the way. It's anyone who's been in their running journey. So anyone they've trained with throughout the years. So I think some, that's one of the key things I've found in my running career is the, is the people I've had around me, whether that be in the team, or like teachers or like coaches so like back from dawn in the in the under 11s group and then like it was like helen and die and Pete and then yourself and then at school it was fraz and jt you know it was all really important so i think that's just one of the key things i think most runners will agree with is the people they've had around them is so important and if you can get a good group of people then it will certainly help you yeah no, i think it's a that's great sentiment no. It's also nice when you've got contacts around the country that you, you know, I always say you're one person away from knowing the other person. I, you, you've got mutual friends if you're in the sport. Yeah. You know, which is immediately got something in common, which is very powerful. And, you know, it's great when I see some of our current athletes meeting up with people who have, you know, retired from the sport, but they've still stayed in contact. I think it's mm, terrific. Definitely. I think, I think running as a sport in general is very welcoming. Like, I think most of the time you could message any running group in the in the country and say, you know what, I'm in the area at the moment. Would you mind me coming down? And they'll be like, absolutely, come down, come down, train with us. So I think 
as a sport running is very welcoming you meet so many people you know doing all these races and it's it's just a very very good sport very nice people in general so yeah absolutely okay that's terrific thank you very much i'll press thank the recording button i hope this has come out okay now <laughs> hopefully <laughs> otherwise yes, we're gonna have to do it all again <laughs>